welcome to Fox 33 News First at 9. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jenna Jordan. Alex has the night off. In tonight's top story, two women are, police say a Shreveport juvenile is in custody tonight after allegedly shooting his stepfather. Shreveport police responded to reports of a shooting in the 9200 block of Scotch Pine Drive for what they initially thought was a self-inflicted gunshot wound just after 10 this morning. Upon investigating, police learned the victim and his stepson had been in an argument and the juvenile fired the gun. The victim was transported to the hospital for treatment. Two men are dead following a fiery crash Saturday night in southeast Shreveport. Police say 52-year-old Latanya Sibley was driving south on Uri Drive and was speeding when she veered into the northbound lane, hitting 31-year-old Courtney Richardson's vehicle head-on. Richardson died at the scene of the accident. Sibley died at the hospital. The crash remains under investigation and toxicology tests have been ordered. Tonight in Fox Regional, Little Rock police are investigating a shooting turned murder outside a gas station. Officers spent hours at the scene on the city's south side. You can see evidence tags marking a garage door and just a few steps away where a car window was shot out. At this point, police are still trying to figure out who pulled the trigger, killing a young father and injuring another man. And now, your Fox First forecast with meteorologist Jesse Kelly. And a quiet evening here throughout all the architects. Still a very warm evening here at 9 o'clock here in Shreveport. Right now we're seeing temperature of 89 degrees. Winds are light out of the east at 7 miles an hour. The dew point is rather high up into the upper 60s. All the relative mid tees are at 55%. Now looking at temperature of 86 degrees. Now today we did see a few isolated thunderstorms here. There's still another thunderstorm just south of center. That's beginning to fall apart as it work its way into Nacogdoches. Seeing a few more thunderstorms towards the north of Idabel. Other than that, things are quiet. So if you saw any rain and thunderstorms today, consider yourself lucky as the outlook for rain over the next couple of days look rather low. But for tomorrow, we'll see another hot afternoon. We see those daytime highs going right back up to the upper 90s. Are you expecting any heat relief anytime soon? I'll let you know later in your full forecast. Jenna? All right, thanks, Jesse. A local pastor's family of six is safe tonight after escaping a massive house fire early this morning. Fox 33's Dominique Dillon has their story. At 3 Sunday morning, Tammy Smith woke up to the smell of smoke in her house. I searched the whole house to see where the smoke was coming from. Couldn't find it on the inside of the house. Smith says her doorbell mysteriously <laughs> rang, and when she opened the door, she saw the flames. I went and got all my kids up out the beds, and we tried to get them out the house, and we uh, moved across the street. Once Smith, her husband, and four kids evacuated, they called 911, but a police officer already had seen the flames and firefighters were on their way. You can actually see the flames in the top of the house through the, um, the air vent. More than 30 firefighters worked for an hour to put out the flames. We stood across the street and just watched it, uh, watched them work tirelessly. Two firefighters were injured and taken to a local hospital. My thoughts and prayers are with the two firemen that were injured uh, trying to save our home and we appreciate them uh, risking their lives. Uh. The home is destroyed and the family says they plan to stay with relatives. Dominique Dillon reporting. Reverend James Smith has been pastor of Midway Missionary Baptist Church number no. two since 1999. Tonight in Fox Safety, a burn ban continues in Bossier Parish. Parish fire chiefs say the ban is due to recent fires, lack of rainfall, and months of extreme heat. The burn ban will be lifted once enough rainfall relieves dry conditions in the area. In Fox Politics, a census report shows the number of Americans living in poverty has finally decreased to the level it was before the Great Recession. But the South is the only region to not see that decline. Jesse Turner reports. The thing that moves more people into poverty is medical expenses. Jane Adams is a policy analyst for Bread for the World. Last year it moved 8 million people into poverty. Adams says that's why many voters and presidential candidates continue to focus on health care. What they want is access to health care. I think the Obamacare worked. Providing health care to every man, woman and child. Adam says the newly released annual census poverty report shows the overall poverty rate has dropped to the levels before the 2008 recession. But the report also shows the first decline in health insurance since the passage of the Affordable Care Act. The hardest hit area is the South, where the poverty rate is also the highest and getting worse, not better. When you don't have access to affordable health care and when you don't have access to, you know, good doctors and good health insurance, 
you are more likely to be food insecure, you're more likely to really struggle to make ends meet. The report shows millions of Americans lost access to Medicaid, not private insurance. So these are people who are really vulnerable, who have complex medical disorders or are very, very poor children. To get coverage levels back on track, Adam says many of these states need to be more proactive in the insurance enrollment process and expand Medicaid. Mississippi has one of the highest uninsured rates in the country. It's also one of 14 states that has not expanded Medicaid, but it continues to be a hot topic in this year's gubernatorial race. In Washington, Jesse Tenor. Tonight in Fox Education, dozens of parents are learning some ways to help their students succeed. The Caddo Parish School Board hosted a back to school celebration Saturday. This event allowed parents to connect with educational, community, and medical agencies. During the event, they also raffled off several prizes. It's so important because we're trying to educate parents in order to help to educate their children so we can have a better community. The group's next event will focus on preparing students for LEAP, and that's a state test. That event is scheduled for October 5th. In Fox Community, organizers for an annual festival are preparing to make more musical memories. Thousands of folks filled Columbia Park Saturday for the 16th annual Highland Jazz and Blues Festival. Musicians from Northwest Louisiana and across the country performed on two stages, filling the air with nonstop music. But the community event is about more than the music. There were also dozens of food and art vendors on site and a kids zone. I love jazz. I love blues. That's my thing. I just love it. We just came out to be with family, enjoy the atmosphere, and get some good food. Organizers say this free music festival is a gift to the community from the Highland Area Partnership. All proceeds will go toward next year's event. Well, get ready for funnel cakes and Ferris wheel rides. One of the biggest events in Texarkana is back and bigger than ever. It's opening weekend for the 75th annual Four States Fair and Rodeo. This year, there's a new Carnival Midway with more rides and, of course, all your fried food favorites. Organizers are expecting more than 100,000 people to attend. Come early so you can be sure and get in the parking lot. We do have some additional parking this year available, and so we're looking forward to being able to come to those crowds. But just everyone come be patient. There's plenty of stuff to do for everyone, and uh, we'll get you in. The fair runs through next Sunday, and you can find more information on pricing and events at arclatexhomepage.com. Well, still to come, meteorologist Jesse Kelly has your full forecast ahead. Plus, in tonight's Fox Best video, pop through special surprise for some fans. Providing health care to every man, woman, and child. Adam says the newly released annual Census Poverty Report shows the overall poverty rate has dropped to the levels before the 2000 census. But the report also shows the first decline in health insurance since the passage of the Affordable Care Act. The hardest hit area is the South, where the poverty rate is also the highest. It's getting worse, not better. You don't have access to essential health care. You don't have access to the, the doctors who need health insurance.
For tonight's Fox Best video, this is pretty cool, a special backstage pass for some Backstreet Boys fans. Some students with Down syndrome got to meet the boy band before their concert in Louisville, Kentucky. A video of the students lip syncing to the pop group's hit, I Want It That Way, was posted on social media and caught the band's attention. The students, ranging in age from 18 to 40, were invited to enjoy a VIP concert experience. And one of the Backstreet Boys described the group's video as inspiring. Now, your weather authority forecast with meteorologist Jesse Kelly. All right, here's a view outside right now where we're looking at mostly clear skies. The moon is shining very bright over Shreveport, Bossier. Today we did see a high of 99 degrees, and that's 10 degrees off where we should be for this time of year. Our normal highs into the upper 80s. This morning we saw low around 71 degrees. Normally we should see temperatures into the middle 60s. Temperatures right now, 85 degrees in Minden, 84 degrees in Texarkana, 79 degrees down toward center. And tonight we see those temperatures falling down area-wide into the upper 60s to the lower 70s. 71 degrees into Marshall, 70 degrees into uh, Mansfield, and looking at upper 60s up towards Magnolia and also into Hope tomorrow. Another hot afternoon. We'll see a daytime high of 99 degrees here in the Shreveport, 100 degrees into Natchitoches, 99 in Atlanta, 97 degrees into Texarkana. Radar is very quiet here across the Architects, although we did see a few thunderstorms today, but those are beginning to wind down. We do have an air flow pressure out to the Gulf of Mexico. This is not really a big deal. We'll be just provide more showers and thunderstorms across the coast of Texas, although the moisture from this upper level low will probably work its way towards the north where we may see a slightly better chance of showers and thunderstorms as we get into the middle part of the work week. But again, most of us will likely remain rain free. Now we're also looking at her, uh, excuse me, tropical storm Umberto right now has winds of 70 miles an hour, it's working its way off towards the north at six, moving away from the Bahamas, which is excellent news. But eventually, it will make a right-hand turn, move more to the northeast, and continue to strengthen as it will become a hurricane, possibly tonight into tomorrow. But we do need rain here into the Architects. Here's a look at the drought monitor. We're looking at moderate, even severe drought showing up in spots here into the Arctic. We do need quite a bit of rain here, but unfortunately, if you're looking for significant rain over the next couple of days, that is not going to happen. The reason why is because we have very strong high pressure into the upper parts of the atmosphere. So for your future cash for tomorrow, we're looking at partly kind of skies for tomorrow. We could see a few hit and miss thunderstorms here or there. Otherwise, partly kind of skies and very hot conditions. Monday evening, thunderstorms that do develop will fall apart. We'll see the same story for your Tuesday. Partly covered skies, hot conditions, maybe a few isolated thunderstorms here. They're probably the best chance to be across the southern edge of the Architects for Tuesday. But again, most of us will remain rain free just because we have the ridge of high pressure in place, blocking any significant rain that will try to work its way into the region. You can see major storms will work its way either towards the north or down towards the south of us. So until the ridge of high pressure break down, not expecting much rain, although possibly by next weekend we could see the ridge of high pressure break down some which may allow for weak disturbance workers going into the region, but still lots of uncertainty on if that will happen. If it does happen, we may see a slightly better chance of seeing a few thunderstorms as we get into next weekend, especially across the northern edge of the architects. And rainfall amounts between now into next weekend. Some of us will see a whole lot of nothing. Others may see something out there. So we'll take anything that Mother Nature wants to provide over the next seven days. Speaking of the next seven days, lots of heat into the forecast. We have a slight chance seeing a few thunderstorms Wednesday through Sunday with lows remaining very warm into the 70s. Jenna? All right, thanks, Jesse. Still to come, a former pro football player faces charges for allegedly staging a burglary. And a Detroit police officer helps a man in need, and it was all caught on camera.
You're watching Fox 33 News First at 9. Tonight in Fox America, a former pro football player is facing charges after police say he allegedly staged a hate-related burglary at his own restaurant. Edon Kaufman is charged with filing a false police report and insurance fraud. Police say his Georgia restaurant was vandalized and spray-painted with racial slurs, swastikas, and the letters MAGA. The 31-year-old was arrested after police found black spray paint and a yellow crowbar in his truck. Kaufman played nine games for the Canadian Football League's Toronto Argonauts in 2011. He was signed by eight NFL teams, but he never played a regular season game. Caught on camera, kindness and caring. A heartwarming moment between a Detroit police officer and a homeless man will give you all the feels and make your day. Kimberly Craig reports. And I observed him standing on Witherell and Elizabeth over here trying to use a water puddle to rinse his razor off and he had sh shaving cream on his hands, his coat, his face, and his eyes. So I had walked up and I said, excuse me, sir. And at that point he's like, okay, I'll leave, I'll leave, I'll leave. And I said, no, do you need some help? And he turned around blindly and said, yes, thank you, God bless. Jeremy Thomas is the Detroit police officer in the heartwarming pictures Jill Mativa Schaefer took and shared on Facebook. Officer Thomas had no idea anyone was watching when he helped the man shave. The razor and shaving cream part of a handout for the homeless that a woman and her daughter had just given the man, a man Officer Thomas has seen around the ballpark. Another Comerica Park staff member said, you know, he's trying to shave in the rain, he's trying to use the downspout to rinse his face off. What he did for me, that was all right. I really appreciate that because, you know, I'm going through my thing and I'm, you know, I, I feel bad about myself, you know, but I'm going to be all right. We found 62-year-old Stanley Nelson sitting a couple of blocks away from the ballpark. God going to bless him. He, he going to bless him for doing that for me because he didn't have to do that. He got a heart, you know, and he understand when you out here on the street, you know, look out for somebody because God will look out for you. And helping others is why Officer Thomas joined DPD three years ago. Just know that this could be you at any day. Um, I mean, like I said, nobody's better than the other person. Maybe at a better position in life, but use that opportunity to you know, take care of somebody else when you can. New York City police arrest a man with a sword at the Empire State Building. The 35-year-old concealed the sword in a cane. Police say the weapon is called a sword stick. The man was sitting on a bench in the observatory of the building when he began acting erratically, placing the sword to his chest. Police say he was not causing a threat to others in the area. As police arrived, the man dropped the weapon and was taken into custody, then taken to a hospital. Well, coming up, the Northwestern State Demons took away a lot of positives in their loss to LSU. Plus, NFL football did not disappoint in week two of the season. Saints and Cowboys action up next. Really be aggressive. Jenna, yay! <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Did I miss something? I just, uh, mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. I'm so happy you just called me Jenna because I just said, yeah, Jenna Jordan, yeah! <laughs> okay. The J team. J team!
Sports with Tori Perrys. Dak Prescott created all sorts of conversation after his perfect passer rating performance in week one against the Giants. And the 2019 Kellen Moore-led offense was yet again on full display this afternoon. The Cowboys taking on their division rivals in Case Keenum. And the Redskins today, second quarter, Redskins leading 7 to nothing. But can we start calling this guy can throw deep Dak Prescott? Sending one on its way to Devin Smith, 51 yards on the score. That tied this game up at 7. Moving ahead, Prescott. This time going to Jason Witten for his 70th career touchdown. That made it 14-7 Cowboys. Third quarter, Dak going again. This time finding Amari Cooper for the 10-yard touchdown here. That made it 21-7 Cowboys. The former Houghton Buck went 26-30 for 269 yards and three touchdowns on the day. Another great day for Dak. Cowboys advanced to 2-0 on their season, taking this one 31-21. And next week, they will take on Miami in Dallas at noon. Well, the much-anticipated rematch of last year's NFC Championship games, the New Orleans Saints are in Los Angeles facing the Rams. First quarter, 3-0 Rams. Breeze going back to pass here. The throw is incomplete, but the bigger concern here is Breeze's right hand, specifically his thumb. He hits it on the hand of Aaron Donald. Breeze would have it looked at and taped, but he would not return for the rest of the game. Teddy Bridgewater coming in now at quarterback for the Saints, and on third and seven here, he finds Cook, who picks up 18 yards on this play. That led to a Saints field goal, which tied it at three. Third quarter, tied at six now. Todd Gurley going around the left end and gets in for the four-yard touchdown. That made it 13 to six Rams. Saints falling in this one today, 27-9 the final. But one bright spot for the Saints today, head coach Sean Payton agreed to a five-year extension worth in excess over $45 million. That locks him in as the head man of the black and gold through the 2024 season. Peyton has easily become a beloved figure in New Orleans, garnering 119 wins since 2006, which included the franchise's first ever Super Bowl title in 2009. Peyton and the Saints will play Seattle next week on the road at 325. Yesterday, the LSU Tigers covered the spread against Northwestern State, but despite the 65-14 final, it was a 10-point game at the half. The Demons held the Tiger to a field goal on their opening drive, took a 7-3 lead off of a connection from Shelton Epler to Quan Shorts, and showed flashes on both sides of the ball early on in the game, although it was a different story in the second half as NSU only accumulated 78 yards. But coming off of that loss to Midwestern State, Coach Laird says that the team took a step forward this week, and their success all starts in preparation. The message that I gave them on Sunday and Tuesday and that transition and not only during the week but to this football game. Now the most important thing is taking that into next week and, and the great thing about it as we start conference uh, zero and zero really looking forward to it going on the road against Houston Baptist. As coach said the Demons opening conference play this Saturday as they head to Houston to take on the Huskies kickoff for this game is set for six o'clock. That's going to do it for sports. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
You're watching Fox 33 News First at 9. In Fox World News, a major motor show is taking a turn toward going green. A whole range of new fully electric and hybrid vehicles is currently on display in Frankfurt, Germany. From sports cars to family-sized SUVs, each of the big German brands had their moment in the spotlight. Experts say the eco-conscious cars are being increasingly seen as a necessity and the future of the auto industry. Only these robots, and then they can really flow in this without any um, stops. So you remove the traffic lights, you remove the um, traffic signs, and they can just flow continuously, controlled by a traffic control system, so like a bigger brain on top. That's amazing. Some experts are predicting electric car sales to surpass the 1 million mark across Europe next year. Hmm, very interesting story right there. Here's a look at your wake up weather tomorrow morning temperatures. Starting off into the 60s and 70s, looking at partly cloudy skies as everyone is going back to school and also back to work. Radar remain very quiet, at least throughout the first part of the day. We see temperatures really heating up quite a bit as we get into the noon hour. We'll see those temperatures up into the upper 90s. That's where we see temperatures for Monday. 99 degrees, 97 degrees for Tuesday. Same story for Wednesday. We're going to continue to see plenty of heat. Not that much of rain. I do have a 20% rain chance from Wednesday into Sunday. We're still looking at drought conditions here throughout all of the architects. So we do need rain here, unfortunately. Not expecting a meaningful rain around here anytime soon. Jenna? All right. Thank you, Jesse. And thank you for joining us. We leave you with a live look from our Louisiana Tower Cam. Have a great night.